Okay, uh, I can't see it. So as you can see, if I move my hand down, yes. sound and the pitch goes down. So let's take a close look at the patch. So here you can see the panning. Uh, here in the middle you have the panner. And as you can see the blue dot which is moving around is the principal sound source. The hollow blue dots behind it are the sound trails. So each one of those blue dots is a reverb, a delay or a granular artifact so they're forming the trails more about them later the top circle is the azimuth or the horizontal plane and the bottom half is the elevation so if I move a sound up to the top it will be above the listener and below, at the bottom below the listener And this circle moving round would be surrounding the listener on the ground floor. And you can see the trails following it there. Now let's have a look at some of the sound sources. There's two sound sources, microphones and samples. These are the samples. There's around 200 samples that are randomly selected and played at different pitches. Three samples get played at a time, but each side of the stereo is processed by a separate granular synthesis. So we have a bank of six granular synthesizers in total. And you can see those here. These are all the controls for the parameters for the granular synthesizers. So each channel is processed in quite a different way and if the same sample does get played more than once it usually sounds completely different because of the way the granulation works. I've also got a microphone input so I can use my voice or an instrument and that can be captured live. Basically this is the volume control for the microphone so I can talk into the microphone and then start spatializing whatever I'm saying or, or playing using the panner. Let's take a closer look now at the granular synthesis. Um, in here we have the granular synthesis patch and on the right here you can see the six granular synthesizers. If we have a closer look at the inside we have two sections. On the left we have the sample processor and on the right we have the live recording. It samples 10 seconds of audio at a time and then there's a poly object here with the hundred instances of each poly object which each one has a groove which produces one grain a tiny amount of time and is convolved with that Gauss envelope. Every 10 seconds of audio then basically has 100 grains and we have six of these granular synthesizers playing at any one time. All of the controls could be independently changed. So as the one goes upwards for example, that would change the pitch upwards. Now if we have a closer look at the trials, the idea I was trying to get was uh, if you wave your hand in the air, sometimes you see a trail behind your hand. So um, I was trying to achieve this effect with sound. Each of the balls is a reverb, a delay line or granular artifact as I've already said. And they gradually get quieter the further away from the sound source they are. So here we have the reverb controls. 
so the first ball falling around the principal sound source might be quite loud the next one a bit quieter the next one a bit quieter the next one a bit quieter and the last one would be very faint with uh, a longer feedback as well however I have found if you leave the last one a bit louder it works a little bit better it doesn't quite work as the same way as visually and here we have the feedbacks for the delays and and reverbs, so that's how long they last. So if one takes longer to fade out than the others, it, it will, you'll hear it fading behind. You have full reverb controls here, so you can you can get a lot more finer control here of the trails. Another effect that I've got going on here, which is the eye of the patch. And this is actually a jitter video. And it takes the RGB output, the data, uh, forms lists of numbers and uses them to control a bank of biquad filters. Each biquad filter is associated with one of the granular synthesizers. So they're really being changed quite heavily. So that they, they never seem to repeat and unusual soundscapes can be created from uh, quite mundane sources. It can be controlled by the wand as well, the filters can be, but at the moment it's being controlled by jitter because the image causes the randomization to have a bit more coherence than just total chaotic randomization because as the picture has a, a coherent pattern, so does the way it affects the sound. Down here you have the LEDs, the level meters, for the 32 channels that the system uses. These are the underground speakers, these are the ground levels, these are the higher mid ones, and these are the very top ones here in blue. The ones above your head. If we go up to the top here, we see the patch that actually processes the uh, the OSC messages from Oscillator. So the Oscillator program will read the Bluetooth from the Wii controller, and the Oscillator will send OSC to this patch there, and that will affect the the pitch. Here we can see Oscillator. So the Bluetooth goes in here. And as well as the pitch, of course, it affects the spatialization. I think that's just about it. There's a few other effects and capacities. Like this here will allow me to sample a certain bit. If I, I like a bit of sound that I've just spoken into the microphone or played, I can loop it using the controls on the Wii. Um, but basically, that's the way the patch works.